Hello, my name is Morgan, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, how to use Emacs Tramp Mode to edit remote files uh, in a very transparent and easy way. Uh, so first off, um, uh, why would you want to edit files remotely? So by editing a file remotely, I mean a file that's not on your current computer. Uh, so it's on uh, a server, a Raspberry Pi, or some other computer uh, and it could be because maybe you have limited physical access to that computer so in this uh, video I'm going to be showing off editing some files on a virtual server that I own sort of but it's located in Toronto obviously I'm not gonna drive down there every time I want to edit a file so I uh, use this technique for that Maybe it's a headless computer, so it could be in your own house, but it's a, like a Raspberry Pi or something that does not have a monitor connected to it. Maybe just convenience. Maybe you could go to the other computer, but, you know, uh, I'll show you that it's pretty transparent and easy to do it on, uh, you know, to do it on a different computer. So it could be more convenient sometimes. Um, now, traditionally, people would use uh, Vim, Vi, Ed, Nano by SSHing into the machine. So, for example, you would open up a, a terminal here, and you would, uh, uh, I'll just clear. So you'd open up a terminal, and you would say SSH into your machine, which I will do here. And you would, you would find the file you want, uh, and you, you would open up your favorite editor, and you would just do it like this. Uh, now there's a few problems. Uh, uh, with editing things like this. Uh, one, one of the big problems is maybe your favorite editor won't be installed on the computer uh, and you'd have to install it. And I mean, maybe that's a big deal, maybe it's not. Sometimes you have to administrate uh, machines that you, you can't install programs on. Um, but the other thing is that every time I press a key, that key is sent to the server uh, and then, so the key is sent to the server, and then I have to wait for the response for every single key press. So right now I have a really great internet connection, so you, I, I can't really display uh, any problems that might arise with that. But if you have a really bad internet connection, this can be really painful. Or if the other machine has a really bad internet connection. Uh, obviously that problem is like non-existent uh, if the device is in the same house as you, but I digress uh, back to the presentation so that's kind of like that's traditionally uh, how you'll probably be taught how to edit files remotely uh, it's very widely used it's very easy to do uh, I mean it's a great option it's just I don't quite like those few problems it has the other thing you can do is you can edit a file and then just copy it over using a program like say S copy where you just copy over SSH uh, it's perfectly fine. I mean, it's great. Uh, the problem is now you have the file on your computer. You have the file on the remote computer, and you have to make sure to manually use this method to copy it over. And that's great if you remember to do that. Sometimes you're not going to remember, and you're going to have two separate files. Uh, well, you, you have two separate files, but you have to you have to remember to keep them in sync. So uh, that can be a bit of a bit of a pain. And so, what's the solution here? Well, I like Emacs Tramp. So it lets you use a local editor on your own computer, and you only have one copy of the file, but every time you save it, 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 it well, you're editing it. Basically, it, it's, it's kind of the same deal as the, as the S copy thing, uh, except for the fact that it's very, it does everything for you. It's very, uh, it hides away all the stuff in the background. So you are using your local editor to edit kind of a cached version of it. And so everything's local and everything feels snappy. And whenever you hit the save button, it automatically uh, copies it over to the remote server. So you're using a local editor. You only have one copy of the file. You never have to worry about, oh, did I remember to copy it over or not? So it's pretty good. But let's see it in, let, let's see it in action. Let's see how easy it is. So here I have some elisp. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just calling the find file function on this string. 
Uh, this isn't usually how you do it, of course. Uh, if you're familiar with Emacs, you would just call the command using Control X, Control F, and it pops up at the bottom, and you would just start typing from here. So I'll, I'll type it out uh, this time. So you'll SSH, and you'll see it does all this nice auto-completion stuff for you, so you, uh, you don't have to remember necessarily everything if you've done it before. Uh, and so here, uh, the syntax is the protocol first. So I'm doing slash SSH because I want to connect to it over SSH. Then your user, so my user is Morgan. The host name or your IP address is next. So that's morgansmith.xyz for me, that's my server. Uh, but you'll notice that I don't actually use SSH over port 22. Uh, and so the way to get around that syntax is you just put a little little pound, or, or the, the correct way to enter the port number is to put a pound symbol, then your port, then your colon, and then your file name. So uh, I will just execute this piece of code here instead of typing it out now. And hello, this is a test file located on a remote machine. I can call a print working directory, and you'll see that my working directory is on morgansmith.xyz. This is indeed a remote file. I guess I can prove it to you by SSHing uh, back into it. Uh, if I remember the syntax, uh, is it lowercase p or uppercase p for port? Uh, I think it's uppercase. No, it must be lowercase. I think it's uppercase for s copy for some reason. Uh, and then we will cat out. And I don't have a uh, completion on. I will cat out test.txt, and you'll see it's the same file. So this is indeed on a remote machine. Um, Oh, that's weird. Okay, apparently the remote machine doesn't have the host name option. But anyways, my host name is Pancake. The remote machine's host name is uh, probably Morgan Smith. So uh, different machines, I swear. Not not cheating. Um, but anyways, uh, so that's us doing some remote. Uh, th oh, well, that was just, that's just us viewing it. Let's edit it. So we edit it here. And then whenever I do save, uh, take a close look at the very bottom of the screen it zoomed by a bunch of stuff automatically for us, but we can take a deeper look if we open our messages buffer and we can see that Tramp did a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes to use, uh, I don't really know what protocol it used, probably, uh, I think in my case, it opens an SSH session that it maintains in the background and it copies it over using that each time but you don't have to worry about that because it does everything in the background. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, and that's kind of the basic usage. So you can see it's super easy. It has a lot of advantages over other methods. Um, so next thing uh, I want to show you is how you can use it for editing files as root on your local machine. Uh, so before we were using the SSH protocol now we're going to use the sudo protocol. Uh, and the sudo protocol is just a wrapper for sudo, the same way that this is a wrapper for SSH. Um, this, isn't, this isn't like uh, generic protocols. These are the protocols that Tramp knows how to deal with. So uh, you'd have to open the Tramp source code or documentation to figure out all the different protocols you can put here. But sudo and SSH are probably the ones you'll end up using. Um, so in between here is the is the is the host name stuff if it's your local host you of course well it, it defaults so you don't have to put stuff there so i have a file at slash test.txt and this is only modifiable by root but i can modify it uh, as you can see on the bottom of the screen again we wrote it uh, using tramp because uh, it's showing off our, our, our tramp uh, syntax stuff so we're able to modify that, but of course we're only able to modify that if we're root. Uh, I can do, what do I do? ls-al slash test.txt. There we go. You can see, yeah, only, only root has write permission. But we wrote to it. Uh, 
yeah, we wrote, we wrote this garbage on the end. So that works. Um, now, why did I tell you that? That's a valid question because we're talking about remote editing. Uh, and so the next thing I want to talk about is kind of uh, jumps or, or you can, so you can chain together tramp, uh, tramp sessions. So you could say use this to SSH into one machine and then from that machine SSH into another machine which is really cool and you can have an arbitrary number of these jumps uh, and that's cool if say you have one publicly exposed machine uh, that you can access from anywhere and then behind that you want to access a, ma a machine that's on that network you I don't know it's complicated so the easier way to show it off is using the pseudo protocol so what I'm doing here is I'm SSHing into my machine uh, as Morgan to morgansmith.xyz and then I'm using a pipe. So the pipe says uh, I, I'm chaining on another tramp command. And so over here I could have put another pipe and I could have kept chaining on different uh, different tramp like roots. Um, now here, here unlike the previous one I actually did put in morgansmith.xyz. The reason I did this is because if you don't, it defaults to localhost. So even even though we're SSH'd in here, it it doesn't know that this is the this is the local host. So I have to explicitly state it here. Um, it's a little quirk. I don't have to specify the user though, because sudo well sudo knows the user. Like if you're using sudo, you're doing it as root. You can use it uh, actually to sudo as other users, um, but uh, most, I mean 90% of the time you're probably going to use it to be root. Um, you can refer to the documentation if you want to uh, do it as not root. By the way, if you want to view the documentation, um, it's just control H I and then the yeah, Emacs has a has a wonderful help system. Just get to the Emacs manual. Uh, I think it's Control H I, and then look for Tramp. Uh, that didn't work. Uh huh. Tramp. Come on. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out where the heck you'd get documentation on Tramp. Here we go. Okay, okay. Okay, so Tramp actually has its own um, its own info page, which is separate from the Emacs help. So if you want to get help, then you are going to want to uh, use your info reader and do info Tramp. And for me, my info reader is Emacs, so it opened in Emacs. But there you go. So that's how you get to the documentation. Sorry for that tangent. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so here we are taking, uh, we're initially using SSH to go to my server. And then, uh, when we're at our server, we're using the pseudo protocol on the server. And then we're modifying a different, uh, file, which I, I, I named the same as the first file, but it's a, well, it's a different file because we'll open it up and we will see that, uh, it will not have my gibberish on the end this time and it says that this file is on a remote machine but we can again add any kind of gibberish we want save it the file is saved everything is great um, I, I'm, I'm gonna trust that uh, I, I'm not gonna confirm that that file exists and stuff because uh, I think I've confirmed stuff enough um, but you might take a look at this and you go, Morgan, that's so many characters. How many characters is that? Uh, alt equals, um, sorry, there we go. That's 66 characters. That's too many to type. I don't want to type that. Nobody wants to type that. So there's this thing called uh, an SSH config file. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up the file .ssh config and here you can put in a syntax like this 
Uh, you can refer to the SSH documentation for more advanced stuff. But uh, the basic is you write host and then your alias. So this is this is how you refer to it. So I'm going to call this Morgan. Um, that's not uh, that's probably not a great name. So like it could be it could be something like uh, VPS for my virtual private server. The username is Morgan. The host name Morgan Smith at XYZ port 732. Um, I'm going to save that, and then you can see over here. Uh, you refer to it as this alias here. So now I put VPS and I'm going to uh, open that up and it takes a moment but hey this is a file that we've seen earlier and it worked just the same. So this here is identical to what we saw previously which was here. Yeah. So we took these how many characters? These 40 characters. And we took those characters and we, through a small config file, brought that down to. Uh, oh, oh. Sorry, I will learn how to use a keyboard one of these days, I swear. Um, so, Alt equals. Uh, 17 characters so we knocked off 23 characters very handy very handy but of course we knocked off a lot more characters now that we are able to chain them together like this so if we do this uh, fail to connect huh oh well obviously it failed to connect I, I changed I changed it from Morgan to VPS. My bad. Now we open that up there. And you want so you'll 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 notice here it's trying to connect as root, even though I set the ho, uh, I set the user as Morgan. Um I'm not entirely certain why that is. I assume that's just Tramp being smart and saying if you're doing sudo, uh you probably uh want you probably don't want the same user that's in your uh, SSH config file. Uh, when you put in the name, uh, the username explicitly, though, it does work. Pretty sure. So I will enter a password. That's probably the right one. And there we go. This is a file we have also seen earlier. I will. Uh... So look at that. That is beautiful. So. Um... I've just showed off my my solution for this problem, but of course there are many solutions to this problem. Uh, many people will use uh, probably a combination of the first two uh, first two options, just using an editor on their remote machine or copying it over. And a lot of people would just be happy with that. Honestly, I would start there because a lot of using this remote editing stuff involves knowing stuff about SSHing. So for example, using this SSH VPS thing, uh, I only know that this will work because I can open a terminal and I can just SSH VPS and I know that this works. Uh, so definitely start with just knowing how to do these first two. Uh, and then after that, you know, if you're an Emacs user, it's a no-brainer to move on to using Tramp. If you really want to use a different editor, there's different solutions. Uh, so, whoops, my bad. So another great solution, which is very similar to this actually, is called SSHFS. This is for SSH file system. So what this does, um, and if you want really good documentation for stuff, you should probably look at it on the arch wiki gonna it's just it's a really good source of information i don't even use arch linux but it's a really great wiki uh and what this does is it allows you to make uh it allows you to take a folder on a remote on a remote computer and kind of like mount it locally so it's like mounting a usb stick but it's all the files on a remote computer and you can edit them like it's uh like their local files. And that way you could also use your local editor. Uh, and if you end up editing local files 
all the time. I would highly recommend, um, I'd highly recommend looking into some nicer solution than just using the editor on the, on the remote machine. So I'd highly recommend doing something like SSHFS or uh, Emacs Tramp, which honestly is, it's, it's kind of the same as SSHFS in a lot of ways. Uh, but anyways, I hope that has helped you learn um, some remote editing techniques that will serve you well in the future. I know that this has saved me lots of time. Uh, oh, and uh, and actually, just a extra extra snippet. Uh, if say you want to copy something, the copy command in in the E shell, so you can access your E shell with MetaX E shell. Um, the copy command is one of these built-in Emacs commands. It's not actually the, 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 like your system copy command. And what this means is that it can actually take a tramp syntax. So I can actually copy this to the VPS as like a file location and it just works. And now when we look there, hoo hoo hoo, you can see it's right there. Look at that. Beautiful. Anyways, that's my time. Thank you.